The neighboring city in the shadow of Etna is Sicily's second biggest metropolis, Palermo's east coast rival, the port city of Catania. Now one of the first things you see when exiting the train station downtown in Catania is the Fontana di Proserpina, a statue built in 1904 that features the goddess Proserpina being abducted by Pluto as he drags her into the underworld on a fiery chariot. Heavy stuff to start, which is very Catania, a place dripping in history and lore. And Francesco and I were first guided to Villa Bellini, a luscious green park that sits right in the center of the city that's a labyrinth of paths, fountains, perfectly landscaped gardens, hedges, and filled with history, statues, monuments, the Avenue of the Illustrious Men, located in the west part of the garden, was inaugurated in 1880 with the busts of the most famous characters in Italian and Catania history, including Vincenzo Bellini, the most famous Sicilian opera composer from Catania, from which the park is named. But Francesco was most interested in telling me about one of his favorite authors, Catanian Giovanni Verga. Fra, tell me yeah. about Mr. Verga here. So we have, we stay in front of the statue of Giovanni Verga that was a, a important writer, Italian writer from Catania, from Sicily, and he write a lot of things important for the Sicily also and for the culture of the Sicily. He do I Malavoglia and also uh, Rosso Maltero. It's two novels, two story that talk about their the real life in Sicily. It's incredible. At the top of the hill in the south part of the park, there's a pavilion called Chiostro dei Concerti, or Cloister of Music. On this day, we ran into a dance class that invited us to participate, and we were, of course, up for the challenge. Okay. <laughs> si, si. <laughs> so in classic Catania style, we found ourselves learning stripper dances and teaching jam band moves to the fine tunes of Britney Spears. And I tell you what, after all that grooving, I was quite parched and just about ready to taste some of the local flavors. Here we are in the center of Catania. We're just walking down the street. It's a nice hot day, so we're gonna get a nice cool beverage here from our friend Selvo, who's gonna make us a salsa limone sale. Okay, let's see what this drink's all about. I think it's gonna be seltzer, lemon, and salt. Exactly. Very good. For a, for a hot city, it's perfect. Perfect drink for a hot day. This is my kind of drink right here, okay? Non-alcoholic. No, a little uh, fizzy water and lemon and salt. Uh, Sounds uh, delightful. Let's have a taste. Woo! Wow, it's very tart. Fresh lemons in there, squeezed. You see the seeds in there. Incredible wow. salvo. Salvo does good work. Yeah. In the in the east part, you try you you find, but also born here in Qatar. That's right, Vale. Yeah. When I say this, I talk, I, I see the eyes of Vale that say to me, it's correct. Buonissimo Salvo, buonissimo. Buonissimo. Very refreshing. Let's get a couple more for the boys, what do you say? Okay, so these salty seltzers seemed very Sicilian. Very East Coast Sicily. And we were able to try a few other varieties, including mandarin, green mandarin, and almond. All very tasty. Oh, I like the all almando, yeah. I like the citrus. Yeah, grazie. Ciao. Ciao. Alla prossima. Ciao. Ciao. As we continued our day, sound guy Valerio, a true Catanese boy, showed us around a few more interesting spots downtown. So, Vale, right in the middle of downtown Catania, 
You have an old, what looks like some sort of amphitheater or something? Yeah, yeah it is. It, it's a Roman amphitheater. A Roman amphitheater built of lava volcanic stone. lava stone. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about this. They used to have a gladiator fight in here. The very curious thing, it's uh, that the fact that they found it just randomly digging for making the sewers. So like a hundred years ago, they started digging sewers here in Catania. Yeah, yeah. And they stumble upon this old, ancient That's what stones. I'm saying. And, uh, and another fun fact is that under this amphitheater, you could find a kind of uh, a maze of tunnels. What about little Valet? Did he ever go down there? Yes, <laughs> I did, but I, it's very dangerous down there because very it's dangerous. totally pitch black and uh, you, you could easily lose yourself down there because um, it's a, a maze, well, pitch black maze. It's amazing that little Valet didn't get lost under there. <laughs> no. Known as the Black Colosseum, this remarkable structure was built by the Romans in the second century and is one of the largest amphitheaters ever built in the Roman era and supposedly looked something like this. It was built out of lava stone and marble, but was constantly threatened by eruptions from Etna, which did eventually bury it completely. The local legend does say that this amphitheater was protected from these eruptions by Catania's patron saint, Santagata, whose story takes place just around the corner from here. According to the legend, the Catholic legend, that was the cell in which Santagata that is the protector saint of the city. Yeah. Used to be Theater. tortured. Tortured, okay. Yeah. It's a very traditional and Catholic point of interest of the city. A lot of people come here in the day of Sant'Agata to, to, to pray, to pray uh, Sant'Agata. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's back up a little bit and not underestimate the Festa di Sant'Agata in Catania. Over a million people attend this fest every year and fill the streets during the procession, where a silver statue of Agata is paraded through the crowd. The people offer long candles called Cedi as an act of penance and a fulfillment of a vow made to Sant'Agata. And the fest is also a bit of a party and always ends with a huge fireworks display over the city. But why such a big deal for this saint? Well, around these parts, they don't pray to Jesus, they pray to Agatha. The story goes like this. The year is about 240 AD, and 15-year-old Agatha makes a vow of virginity, and then turns down the advances of Roman governor Quinchanus. She's imprisoned and tortured while being whipped, burned, and after still not giving in, they cut off her breasts. She eventually dies in prison, but has been known to perform healing miracles to those that pray to her and has become the world's patron saint of rape, breast cancer, and burn victims. According to the tradition, that was the cell, and inside of what is now a church, there was the place where she was tortured to death. You know that it, the, the Catania Cassata is called Minuzzi Sant'Agata, that is Sant'Agata's tits. Really? That's uh, why they're shaped like that? Yeah. Okay, the Catania, Catania Cassata, Cassata cake. is shaped like Sant'Agata's breasts. Yeah. They were cut off yeah. when she was tortured yeah. as a martyr yeah. to the Catholics. Now look, by showing these photos, I honestly am not trying to be funny or make a joke of this but I do find it interesting the way that the Catanese have chosen to honor this saint. I guess the importance of food in Sicily is probably the next closest thing behind the importance of saints and religion. So combining the two isn't as strange or morbid to them as maybe it is to me. The moral of the story is that you have to keep on with your ideals in front of any kind of threat, a symbol for the Catania woman. She was a strong, uh, strong, strong saint. Yeah, 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 yeah. People take this story and what it teaches very seriously. And actually, right after Valerio finished his thoughts, a man approached us and retold the whole Sant'Agata story to us again. And because he was so passionate, we listened to his full extended edition of the Sant'Agata story. We don't have time for that today, but at the end he was very kind and gave us all Sant'Agata necklaces. It was an extremely nice gesture, 
and it signified a real nice moment for us there in Catania. And I wanted to respect Sant'Agata by getting a proper chain for the necklace. So we stopped into the hip vintage shop called Freak, and they took care of it. Sant'Agata. Okay. While there, it was only natural to shoot a classic try on silly clothes scene, which you will see now. This is what happens at Catania. They give you beer at the shop. Check this out. No, these are leave it. Leave it on. These, these, these are really nice. Ready? Stopping at Freak was a nice change of pace and had a great energy. Actually, Catania overall was starting to feel like more of a familiar urban city. A place with an edge, but also very comfortable. A place I could actually see myself maybe living in. And while wandering around, we found ourselves in Piazza Vincenzo Bellini, where a big group of folks were watching the Euro Cup soccer, where Italy were taking on the Swiss in the group stage. And what timing did we have? <laughs> Italy went on to win that game and actually won the whole Euro Cup that summer. So it seemed appropriate that we would celebrate with a couple beverages at a nearby pub called Mezza Parola. At this pub, which opened in 2013, they specialize in creative art-themed cocktails and colorful, visually dazzling shots, like these here. They make over 30 different types of these specialty shots, including the Dali, which has 10 different ingredients in one little glass. Now look, it would have been rude for us not to try a few of these beautifully crafted shots. Luckily for us, these little drinks are not very high proof, and they are more about the presentation than they are about the alcohol content. In Sicily, mezza parola is an expression used during a conversation, which means there's no need to say anything else. So I'll simply say, we had a fun night. And not only was the energy in this pub rocking out that night, but the whole city was buzzing after the Italian victory. Catania is the best city in the world. In the world? Yes, yeah. of course. Not just this one, the world. Catania is better than Palermo. Better than Palermo? Yes, of course. It's better than Palermo. It's better than Palermo. We are. Palermo shit. Mamma Etna is our mother. Etna mamma. Etna mamma. Goodbye. Thanks a lot. Sicily is not Italy. Sicily is not Italy. You heard it here first. It's Friday morning in Catania. We're in the city center, and behind us is one of the most colorful, lively markets in all of Sicily, the Catania Fish Market. It starts here with this beautiful fountain that is a river that runs through the whole city, and the fish mongers in the market here use that water to clean the fish and uh, you know, the water is used for different things all throughout the city. So let's take a look at the old fish market here. Yeah. What better way to start the morning after a late night out than at a loud, smelly fish market? I kid, I'm joking. I love this place. What a feast for the eyes and senses. This vibrant and lively fish market is where local fishermen proudly display their bounty. Each catch reveals a tale of the deep blue Ionian Sea. Mangia 
It's not all about the fish here. This place is just an experience. Visitors and tourists mingle and haggle with the locals, exchanging stories and sharing in the excitement of the market. We actually bartered a couple packs of smokes with these guys here in order for them to allow us to film them. That's the vibe here. Swordfish, tuna, salmon, sardines, octopus, squid, shrimp, sea urchins, crab, little fish, big fish, maro. They have it all. If you do come here, keep your eyes open and stay aware. As you never know what dangers may present themselves in the Catania fish market. And just around the corner, if you've had enough fish, the market continues with a giant assortment of fresh fruit and vegetables. This place is a one-stop shop for some of the freshest and best food in the world. And god dang, isn't it about lunchtime? <laughs> Okay, remember way back in episode one and we're on the west coast in Marsala and we tried arancine, the feminine version of the famous fried rice ball. Well, we promised a further explanation and here it is. On the east coast, these balls are masculine. Arancino, arancini. Here we are at the Sarafino arancini. Correct. Espressi, As okay. In Catania, that is a male food, the arancino. Exactly, correct. Okay, we don't yeah. know why they, it's a male here, and on the west coast it's a female, but... We, we don't know. If we want here an arancina, they doesn't know what this means. They say, no, we don't have that. We don't have that. Why? Well, only God and some creative 9th century chef have the true answer. Okay, let's go see how they make them. Yeah, let's see how they make them. The most popular theory about arancini is that it originated simply as a creative way to repurpose leftover rice and other savory scraps and ingredients like cheese and meat from the service class that would collect them at the end of big meals and medieval banquets. In order to preserve these precious bites, they would coat them in rice and breadcrumbs and fry them, which gave them a longer shelf life. Well, the ragu and the butter. Exactly, the butter. That's the butter, but it has... Uh, what does it usually happen there about? Uh, cheese and ham. Cheese, uh, ham and uh, bechamel. Bechamel. Yeah. bechamel, like a cream sauce, cheese and ham, and peas. And, and peas. peas, always peas. This practice of using leftovers to create new dishes was extremely common throughout all of Sicily, but Catania loved to take credit for this particular street food, which you can now find all over. And according to Valerio, the best ones you can find in all of Catania are right here at Serafino Arancini Express. Yeah, sounds real good. Yeah. I'm gonna start with the most typical, yes? The meat. This is the ragu. Yeah. This is the most traditional one in Catania. And it's shaped like, what does it look like? The volcano, Mount Etna, yes? yes. Wow. This is the top of the lava volcano here. I will eat this now. All right, I don't like to rank things or foods like this that often, but I can confidently say this was the best rice ball to ever enter my body. Okay, Catania. I see what you're up to, Catania. And this place has been approved by Vale to be the best in Catania. The gooey cheese. This is, this is a delight here. I need to get another one of these. Okay, now this is the burro. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, look at this. We open the egg, and we see, oh, baby. This looks outrageous. Whoa. It, they're different than the other coasts. They are. They do more with the middle. Yeah. It's much more rich and uh, full. Whoa. We have pistachio and shrimp. Oh yeah. my god. And we have regotta and spinach. And spinach. Shit. The one problem here is that they have like 15 types of arancini to try, and I have zero willpower. So I guess I'll need to find some time to work it off. I'm gonna go for a run. A long run. Found a short here. Mm. Thank you, Vale. 
Thank you, guys. Us here. Thank you for showing us your city. It's a wonderful city. Thank you. Frank said it was a complete shithole. Ah, say yeah. to the camera, Frank. It's a, a great city, and I love it. <laughs> Do you think these are better than Aaron Chines? Absolutely it's better. Wow, I'm shocked. Yeah, me too. Can you I believe be it? Okay. Oh, mama mia. Mama mia. Okay. And while we're here, we might as well cap it off with a dessert arancino with pistachio cream. I mean, it's filled with pistachio cream. What? How could you not eat it? Did I get the cream? Yeah. No, 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 no. I got you. You got some. On a quiet afternoon in Catania, we had a chance to appreciate some of the simpler elements to this complex city. Like the statues and monuments you find in every square. The ancient architecture crafted with care. The dark lava stone beneath your feet. A new generation studying centuries-old concrete. Valerio, of course, showing me some of his favorite places like an alley behind the theater, with colors and culture filling the spaces. A little park displaying infamous men without heads. And a tiny panificio, where they bake special, circular, cuchidatu breads. There's the famous marionettes, each with its own medieval story, in a neighborhood full of progress that's finally returning to glory. It's the San Bordillo district, streets once flooded in red lights, but it's slowly transformed into a vibrant spot for lively nights. This particular spot, it's very interesting because it, it was bombed during the Second World War. And, it, and this is the only spot in the whole city that it wasn't rebuilt. It was a uh, drug, prostitution, till a couple of years ago when a couple of artists came here to requalify this area with art. You know, you know, art is art. So sometimes the, the city calls artists from all over Europe and the world really? to do something. And sometimes it happens. Like in the night, it's clear, and now there is a piece of art. Man, you it's, you, it's colorful. It's vibrant. You it's can lively. see you can see life. You can see protest. You can see the will to make something good in a city that has wounds, that has to be healed. And art, I think, it's the cure. I couldn't agree more with Valerio's sentiments. I could feel the energy of a place and people on the verge of something special. The San Bardillo district, an inspiring place for Catania. Okay, now since I'm basically half Catanese at this point, I have to mention a few of the other big items we've overlooked. Like the Piazza del Duomo with the Cathedral di Sant'Agata. And what's the deal with the elephants? Well, it's a Roman import and represents strength, resilience, and good fortune. But I was interested in one more thing, something that Valerio had been telling me about forever. It's a very traditional thing all over Catania, but has an especially big presence on a street called Via Plebiscito. This road is where the real Catanese chill in the evenings, the home of a very particular type of cuisine, a food tradition going back hundreds of years that the folks of the neighborhood partake in most evenings when they fire up the grill. Now this segment might be controversial to those people living outside of Catania, and I sincerely apologize in advance to anyone who might be offended by this next part. Sorry, Mom. But I'm of course talking about... Horse meat. Simply put on the grill with a little salt and uh, vinegar. Okay. Oh, Here we do. We put on bread, or we just eat it. We we can put it on the bread in the bread. We can eat just like this. 
Have a taste. Alright, I'm gonna have a taste. Here we go. Eating horse. Yeah. We're in Sicily. We're smoking. Delicious. Fantastic. You like it? I do like it. It's a nice item. I love it. Very, very specific Sicilian. Ballet says it's cooked to perfection. It's, it's good. It's very good. Take a little, put on some bread here. Yes. We'll dip it in the sauce here. Yes. Mmm. <laughs> I love it. It's not very unusual. You have only to fight the idea that we are eating an horse. That idea excites me. I'm so hungry I could eat a horse. You know what I mean? <laughs> and we do it for real in Catania. Okay, grilled horse on the street with beer and bread and friends. This is my new favorite hobby. It's like a Philly cheesesteak without the cheese, you know what I mean? It's like a Yes. This is an old horse here. <laughs> This is not a little pony, okay? It tastes like an old horse. There are farms to have this meat. The man said, when we arrived, you will start with one slice, you will end with four slices. I think this is number three and four right here. Yeah, <laughs> he was right. I'm really happy that you appreciated that because uh, all the tourists come here and hear about that we eat horse are kind of disgusted about. Listen, it sounds disgusting. You know, on paper, it's like, yeah, we eat horse. That's like, why would you do that? We can eat other animals. It's not so scary. No. And it's very, very healthy. I don't know if I believe that. No, no, no. It's, it's this, kind of, this kind of meat is uh, low fat, very low. Now, I can't confirm or deny Valerio's claim to this being a healthy snack, but our crew sure enjoyed it. Minus Francesco, who doesn't show up in this scene as he doesn't eat meat and is pretty much fully against this eating activity. My conclusion, Catania, horse meat, all good. With a special thanks to these nice guys. That's the man right there, the horse man. And of course, Valerio, for sharing his beautiful city with us. See you next time. Farewell from Horsetown. Peace and love.